The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Network Adventures. What adventures awaits our heroes? Let's go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations to our featured presentation. The very first radio version of Peter O'Donnell's Modesty Blaze character, adapted for radio by Morris Travers. Last Day in Limbo was the eighth Modesty Blaze novel published in 1978. In the jungles of South America, the evil mistress of the slave plantation Limbo has had many rich and famous people kidnapped and enslaved, including Modesty Blaze's friend Danny Chavez. During a kidnapping attempt of the loathsome Paxaro, Modesty and her associate Willie Garvin learn of Danny's captivity and set out to rescue him and his fellow slaves in an adventure that spans London, Switzerland, New York and Guatemala. Garvin speaking. Hello, Willie Love. Princess, now that makes my day. It's good to hear you. Thank you for my flowers at the airport. They're beautiful. I just thought I'd say welcome home to dear old London town. All part of the Garvin Special Service, Miss Blaze. I wondered how you knew I was flying in today. Then I realized Johnny Dahl phoned you from New York, right? That's it. He said the two of you had a couple of days there after you cut short your hunting trip. Did he tell you why we cut it short? No, he reckoned you'd want to film me on that yourself. Quite right, I do. I want to hear just what you make of it. How about this evening? Okay, all right. Cottage in the country or the penta? Oh, the penta. Okay, I'll be around this evening. Bye, Willie Love. Bye, Princess. What have you found out? I've spent the last day or so digging into things back as you wanted. With any results? I think so. Have another look at this magazine. The one your Aunt Benita showed you with the picture of Dahl and the girl? Mm-hmm. Concentrate on the girl. Why her, especially? I think she was the one responsible for putting our two men down. Are you serious? Her name is Modesty Blaze. Blaze? You've heard of the network? Certainly I have. It was a crime syndicate, and a large one of that throughout a dozen countries. She used to run it. In fact, she created it. This girl? This girl. Exactly where she surfaced from doesn't seem to be known. But she turned up working for a small mob in 
Pantier eventually took it over and built it into a big-time organization. Art, jewel theft, smuggling, gold and currency manipulation. The two fields she refused to touch were the most profitable ones, drugs and the vice rack. That seems hard to believe. It's a fact. Her lieutenant's name is Garvin. They're one hell of a combination, particularly in a fight. She's as cool as they come and more dangerous than a black panther. He's a knife specialist. In action, he always carries two of them in a harness of his own design. They say with a blade, he's the deadliest thing alive. And now, what does she operate in? She's given up crime. They made a package of money, both of them, and retired. They now live in England. But occasionally, they get involved in jobs for a department of the Foreign Office, a top-secret intelligence section controlled by a man named Tarrant, Sir Gerald Tarrant. An unusual woman, this modesty play. Intriguing, Damien. Mm. Very much so. Oh, 
Better swallow a couple of these tablets and steady you up. Hey, hang on, hang on. What's that in your hand? What do you mean, tablets? Never seen these before. But here you are. Take a good drop. Like I said, Jacoby, we can all learn. Okay, Maud. Let's go. You make good coffee, Maud. Glad you like it. I like your flat, too. How's your back after the Jacoby treatment? Oh, I'll survive. What's wrong? Wrong? Nothing, nothing at all. Now, don't give me that. I'm seeing a different Maud Tiller from the one I remember. You worried any minute now I'll be suggesting bed? No. Well, oh, I don't know. Maybe. Well, that's a bit stupid, isn't it? Well, it's not as if it hasn't happened to us before. Well, it was good. Well, not better than good. And you know that. But when was I ever the pushing kind? I know you're not, Willie. I'm sorry. But it would be sort of natural for us to go to bed, and I... I just don't feel like it. Oh, cheer up, love. It happens to everyone. What, even up to me one day? So why don't you relax and stop worrying, eh? All right. That's a ticket. Now you can tell me about Switzerland. That assignment of yours, and what happened? Switzerland? Of course, that's where it all goes back to now, isn't it? No, I can't talk about that. Security. Oh, don't be daft, Maud. I can find that easily enough. I'll twist it out of old talent. I'm on the safe side, for God's sake. Well, the job was to find out what I could about any undercover operations of a man named Ramon Paxera. Did I tell you why before you went? Oh, you've got to be kidding. That's what I thought. No information handed out, only order. Exactly. My instructions were to get close to this pack zero. Getting close meant bed. That's when men talk. And women. I don't know about that. Not as modesty. Sometimes I know what he played. Well, pack zero has a villa on the lakeside. And there's another man with him. Damien. Friend, companion, bodyguard, I don't know. Anyway, they like to take their girly pleasures together. A threesome. And the name of the game is humiliation. Oh, more you much. No, that's not their kick. They act out fantasy. Childish, ridiculous mostly, but degrading. It's all part and parcel of my job. I've had to do it before. Actually, only twice, so it's nothing to make a fuss about. And this business in Switzerland, I should be able to get a giggle out of it, shouldn't I? But it gets to you, Willie. After a while, it leaves your self-respect in ashes. Well, I know I shouldn't feel that way, but I can't help it. Well, in the end, it was for nothing. I didn't find out a thing. A tired now? Oh, down to the last detail. They well, sent me to Sussex for a spell of hard training. I think he imagined that would take my mind off things. I've got a better idea. You take some leave. I'll fix it with him, and you come away with me. Anywhere you like, just the two of us. No bed or anything like that. Just good friends. Like you and modesty. It works, Mom. Did you ever want it more than that, with her? No. The way I look at it, she's the princess. And I'm there whenever I'm needed. And that's enough for me. How about it, then, eh? I've gone off somewhere. Oh, thanks for giving you a sweet, but all I want is to be left alone. That's the worst thing for you, love. No, it isn't. I think I'll go to the country for a while, back home to my parents. It's good then. Moore, why don't you talk to the princess? She's been through it more than once. She'll No, I don't want to talk about it anymore. And don't tell her. Please, Willie, don't tell anyone. Promise. All right, love. All right. I promise. Thank you, Willie. I am grateful. And I'm very fond of you, but... I would like you to go now. Sure. Anything you say. Till next time, Maud. I'll buy her there, and I might have something that will give you a bit of a giggle. Bye for now. Oh, I won't keep you chatting. You've been a busy sort of a fella. 
I was wondering if you're free tomorrow evening. Thought we might have a bite of dinner together. Dinner? That sounds very agreeable. There's this new place I've found, not far out of town. Terrific food. My gastric juices are flowing already. Pick you up in the car, say, 6.30? That was splendid. Right. Pip, pip, toodle on, cheerio for now. Goodbye, Willie.
you got to. Will it? Surprised to see me? A bit. I've been scouring the hotels looking for you. 
Then I talk to the lady. Where are you based? I've got a small chalet on the south side. I hired this cruiser for observation purposes. Will you now? I know all about what happened to Maud. Karen told me off he's twisted his tail. Ah, uh, now I get it. You didn't want me to tell you, Princess. So I thought maybe the thing to do was give it all a bit of a comic angle. Willie, don't feel bound. But if you could use a hand... You need to ask. Well, you know, they're not the same somehow. Take some of the spice out of it. All right, I'm in. But it's your caper. What have you got in mind? A little treatment for Paxero and his pal Damien. Take on, Princess. Over on the northern shore. Here, use the big one. What's Paxero doing? Yes, no staff living in. A man and two girls come each morning to clean up and serve lunch. Then they go. In the evenings, Paxero and Damien dine out. And I reckon at night, they only switch on the alarms on the ground floor. So you're going on the top floor? Tonight. Just as a reconnoitring exercise. And they're tucked up in your bed, safe and sound asleep. Well, that's a Modesty Blaze was directed by Derek Hollivart.